Hi everybody, uh, thanks for coming back. Uh, today I'd just like to do a video showing some pictures and images that I found on Gallica. Um, also that I've received from Martin Nika. Uh, stuff he's found is just like really fascinating and depicts a completely different past from what we're taught and what we're led to believe. But I just wanted to go through these images anyway. And you can see that in, even in this, uh, from the Roman times, uh, which is uh, the Grot. Sorry, I don't know where that is. Um, Giotte? I don't know. Per se. But that no bit of detail is missed, other than the plaques, of course. Everything is just impeccable, you know crazy and I've got loads of pictures to go through so I will just go through them quite quick but I mean hundreds of years ago uh, this is a bronze sort of thing hundreds of years ago when we had horse and cart how, how is it possible to build these kind of things and pump water without electricity you know history is completely different uh, it's just some of the stuff that was around then is just magnificent have been destroyed and disappeared and I, even now with with the vehicles and the technology we have to build something like this it would be so expensive unbelievably and this you know it's just massive I know this people can say that this ain't proof that these existed but they're, they're documented with as best as a, a photograph in them times without an actual camera could be uh, and on a lot of the pictures you can tell that the scale is is quite accurate where the stuff still exists but see on this I mean why would anyone want to build something so big where you don't even stand as tall as the foundations of it you know it just makes no sense and they're massive and what would be the purpose to to us being like that. And this is uh, what the Temple of Solomon looked like, standing within. You can see the people here and the height, the height of these arches. I mean, it's monumental, you know. It's just, it's just so much more than what, what is needed. And uh, yeah, here's a fort wall been destroyed you can tell it's been shot at blasted at cannons and stuff but the thickness of that wall is, is six foot thick maybe maybe even thicker these kind of things being built would have taken a lot of effort a lot of money and a lot of time and a lot of lives you know, and here's a uh, um, plans and designs for fortifications different shapes So you've got the elevation of some, the irregular type ones, triangle type ones, square fortification, just loads of them. Noticed as well they've got like packs of cards there as well, I didn't notice that before. There's loads of different designs of fortifications. And this is a uh, I don't know where that is. You can tell uh, as a town, they, these are like blocks. This is a monumental design to get something like this created. To build just the foundations of this town would be multiple times more difficult than building the town itself. And here is uh, some Brussels, Gent, and Bruges there. Yeah. Now this is Lille. And look at that star for it. It's just amazing. And it's the whole city is built in fortification. I mean, nowadays you probably couldn't see it as clearly as all that. But look at it. It's just incredible. And this is uh, Strasbourg. That's the citadel, and you can see around the citadel, the city itself, it's 
highly fortified as well. I guess this is plans for a new section. Even this, even this one depicts fortification, castles, and towers. You know, all this would have been so much more difficult to do than building these little houses. This is the little citadel. One, two, three layers. That's Lil. So there was the citadel we just saw, and there's the extent of the rest of the city and all its fortification. And yeah, seeing I know this is just a drawing, but these kind of buildings are everywhere, all over Europe and everything, all built for people bigger than us I suppose and all magnificent magnificent with moats and stuff as well even but back in the 1800s, 1700s when we didn't have anything but horse and carriage and no roads I mean how could it be possible to build hundreds of these all over the place as well as all the fortifications we're seeing it just, it just doesn't tie in with what we get taught you know Things like this all over Wales, hundreds of castles like this to be built, horse and cart, no roads, just makes no sense. So, Brissac, Brissac, I don't know. Char, Charla Boy. There's thousands of forts all over. The earth. Yeah, I'll get this one in because uh, it shows like royal fame passage in a year, and uh, looks like they're going out to conquer fortifications. There's loads of information on that. Treaties and treaties. I don't know. amazing this one looks like this fort might be going into the ground I don't know though and uh, yeah you look at structures like this where it's just all outside pillars holding up massive plateaus or whatever it just makes no sense that people from 1800s and earlier, without the technology we have now, with power, like electricity, like we're taught in school, it just it seems to me impossible that all these kinds of things could have been built. And these kind of fortifications everywhere. Massive, massive, going on for kilometres, kilometres, and even over waterways and stuff as well. And the world must have been completely different to what, what we're taught, that as I believe anyway, that we've devolved for, over time. You know, we've shrunk in size as well. Don't live as long, and uh, don't build as well either. You know, it's possible that people could have lived in there, could have lived in that room right there. Might have only had access to that yard and obviously to that gate, but never got to see the rest of inside that fort because it's all just sealed off to whoever can get in there. Only. I don't know. Antiquity, fortified. Here's what looks like a plan of um, preparations for a fort over a waterway. Uh, I can't rotate. Yeah, I 
I mean, if you see these pillars in the size of that person, what would be the purpose of someone hundreds of years ago that big, or a group of people that big, building something with pillars that big, that wide, and that heavy? Why would you need to hold that up? I mean, it's just, with that much strength, it makes no sense. It, it just seems impossible for, to me for, to be done. Right. This kind of like shows a reset how uh, certain ones that have done well can uh, be fed and how others are left of serpents. Martin showed this bit, uh, image about a month back. It's really interesting. It's got a lot of information on it. Here's an image I saw where uh, it looks like it's from England. This looks like a, yeah, they're firing lightning bolts or electricity or something, maybe fascies, uh, out of balloons, you know, for war. And look at that boat. There's like a volcano on it. It's incredible. Look at that boat building on it, a tree on top, another one over there, apparently uh, yeah, that, that can hold thousands of people on it, uh, the story is when that was built, so um, it shows the inventions of uh, getting shipwrecks off the ocean and also holding balloons in position above the water, and I only kept this in, in this collection here. So uh, I was just wondering, I don't know, that, you know, maybe the artists put these in the water and that's how they got the coastline. They just went up with their little basket and stood in their basket every day and they could see the coastline f for miles off by sitting in one of these things positioned. And maybe that, that's how they saw from a high level. I don't know, I'm just uh, suggesting. Uh, just thought I'd say that. Yeah, I don't know what this is about. That's crazy, isn't it? I mean, they just um, filled the helium or something. What? Labyrinth in Versailles. Yeah, this is uh, a whole book, but. Um, Grand art of artillery in the Roman times. And they had rockets. You know, it's crazy. And if Romans were 2,000 years ago, or ended 2,000 years ago, like we're told, you know, how do they have all this? They had literally rockets, which ties in with the stuff I've been reading about ancient times and stuff they were doing during war and things, you know. It's crazy. Germans didn't invent rockets in World War Two. <laughs> Romans have already got them here. Here's a, a cometarium, which uh, made me think a bit, you know, think, considering that the Earth is on plane. But, you know, if that... Right did represent the second heaven and that's where they're all coming out of they do all seem to appear not all of them because I see that one don't go start or finish from out here but a lot of them do kind of start from out there and either end out there or disintegrate in but, uh, yeah, I suppose I need to give that more thought before I talk about that But, you know, these kind of constructions, hundreds of years ago in their roads, just these little carts and uh, people being in, insignificant in size to, you know, the windows being up here and that person when they're over there probably being that tall. What would be the point? And, you know, this is just monumental to the people. 
uh, I kept this on because this depicts a comet from um, 1664 to 1665. And this comet it's showing was going from right to left on the 14th of December, same 15th and the 18th. And then on the 25th it starts to turn direction. And 26th it's coming towards the observer. And the 29th, 30th, 31st and then 1st of January. Seems like it's uh, floating around for a few days, slowly coming towards them. And then on the 3rd of January it looks like it turns to the right. 5th of January it's fully down off on the right. 6th of January it's got propelling off big and then, you know, still going off. And then into February it kind of changes direction again. I mean, if, if a comet was in a vacuum it wouldn't be doing that um, without a good reason, you know, and without the magnetic reason to do it. Uh, yeah, we know it's not a globe anyway. So uh, yeah, there were some of the pictures I found. Uh, there were, there are some more images here. While I've got a bit of time, uh, they are partially to do with <laughs> architecture and giants and stuff, but. Um, it goes a bit diverted and I didn't have the time to go and separate them all so I'll just go through them all anyway. But this, this map from 1570, a Roman map, uh, it shows the northern region of land that we don't see on Google Earth or anywhere today. It also shows that America had towns and stuff in the 1500s and people there. So it shows how great the extent of southern lands is. And yeah, Terra Australis. That's what I used to call it. This is great. This is like a lump of rock in the ground that has been, this temple has been carved out from the rock. The rock's been taken away, I suppose. Um, it just looks incredible. And you know, people, cavemen <laughs> type people, <laughs> how could they do that? Just a uh, David and Goliath story of giants. There's a place in Turkey that's like this that uh, can hold thousands of people built underground. You can see this image. This is in Siberia, but and these are people. But what purpose would it be for uh, people of that size to build something with blocks that big? You know that's. I don't know, 20 foot, 30 foot tall, and what, maybe 100 foot wide? One block, one brick. It's bigger than most buildings in some towns. Mm, it's apparently Goliath's bed. And he's probably about twice the size of a normal person. And it's not a photo, so scale might be wrong. This is uh, King Og's iron bed, apparently. So, so it was said. That kind of looks like a bottom of a glass beer bottle to me. Here's a picture of a uh, kind of an angel, and then us little people serving him. Another depiction of a giant baby eating cows as snacks. But the giants are very prevalent in our history. You know, people cutting up the fish, the birds eating the dead giant there. It's a holy one visiting with the dead. And that's disgusting, that giant eating people. It's like a giant laying down other giants to rest, I suppose. The 
these kind of fortifications. I mean, for anyone to any company, building companies, give a quote to do that now, you know, they would be, have the biggest smiles on their faces in the whole world. So they would probably be the, some of the richest men in the world for building. Uh, you know, this town would owe a lot for this kind of fortification. It's probably why the last reset took so long to end because it's a lot of walls to break down. You know. Electricity out there is on a vehicle. Looks like a, a pram for adults. <laughs> Northern Lands, this is 1594. Shows the Northern Lands. Above the Arctic Circle shows uh, America and lots of towns, people living there probably. Like the Southlands being massive as well. from 1584 of uh, Britain and towards the North Pole the Northlands is that a uh, fresh land, fresh land freeze land maybe and that is that like island of fall so fall history, did that come from there and we've got uh, Greenland there is that Iceland over there? Or is that Iceland? I don't know. So yeah, the point of the video really was just to show that, um, yeah, some of the things that I say that might not sound Right, um, might have some truth to them because a lot of the stuff we're finding in in these websites with history that isn't very well known about, it kind of shows a completely different history. You know, hundreds of years ago, who could have built this with just horse, horse and carriage? You know, such a high fortification, and then a second layer looks like to me that it's another group of people, a group of time that it was built and then more fortification on top of that which is the foundation for the buildings and then the buildings themselves it's just so much work and I know people might say that the ancients were inefficient but no, no, there's, there's just so much to what they've done to what's been done that they had to be smarter there's no way that what we're taught is right It's a boat? No, it's a bird, sorry. Some star forts to about today. Look at them ones there. Look, all these everywhere. And, uh, Fountains, people with no power. They did quite well, eh? This is from 1700. Don't know, lots of towns. Might as well be named, but still. You know, if, if Columbus went over there in 1500s or whenever it was, in the official narrative is. That, you know, that's when it got started getting colonised in 200 years or so. People must have been having a lot of babies to have this many towns going on from the very few that was uh, named a couple of hundred years earlier in the Roman maps. Okay, there's loads, loads.
different zone of star fault. Do another video. I've found some other books as well related to joint architecture and stuff that um, I'll do maybe today, but if not as soon as possible. Uh, just showing that there's just no way that we did it. <laughs> These buildings are just way beyond the the ability for us to be able to achieve them. Uh, um, I hope that was interesting enough, and some of them Im images were good. And uh, yeah, I'll do the next video as soon as possible. Thanks for watching. God bless.